Greetings and welcome to the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast series. Podcast episodes are available on VHHA.com and on popular podcast hosting apps, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, and many others. Episodes of the podcast also air each Saturday at noon and Sunday at 10 a.m. on 100.5 FM, 92.7 FM, and 820 a.m. across Central Virginia. Please send any questions, comments, or feedback to PCFpodcast at VHHA.com. Again, that's PCFpodcast at VHHA.com. And today we're excited to be joined by Nancy Morgan, a volunteer here at the Children's Hospital of the King's Daughter in Norfolk for a conversation about her time as a professional cuddler in CHKD's NICU. And with that, welcome to the program, Nancy. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me to talk about what I do when I'm in the NICU. Well, we appreciate your time and being with us today. So before we get into the specifics of your work as a NICU cuddler, let's just talk about volunteerism generally for a moment. Across Virginia, mm-hmm. many people volunteer in a variety of roles in hospitals. There's even a group called the Virginia Healthcare Auxilians and Volunteers who coordinate hospital-focused volunteer work, and we at VHHA uh, work with them and are very supportive of what they do and appreciate all hospital volunteers. So if you would, could you just tell me about what drew you to CHKD and what inspires your volunteerism generally? Sure. I've been retired for a number of years, and for the first few years of my retirement, I spent my time doing those things that most retired women do, like cleaning out drawers and closets and putting photos and albums and other household projects that need to be taken care of. And after a time, I decided that I had a gift of time and I needed to share that with others and help others and uh, give myself a sense of purpose as well. One of my daughters had suggested at some point that I might enjoy volunteering at a hospital somewhere and rocking babies in the nursery because she knows how much I, I love being with babies. So after moving to Norfolk from North Carolina to be near my children and grandchildren, some dear friends of mine invited me to join a group of of uh, CHKD volunteers who were collating documents for the patient charts. And you know this was a while ago because mm-hmm. um, we don't use paper charts anymore mm-hmm. in the hospital. So this group met in the volunteer office space. And that's where I first learned about the volunteer cuddler program at CHKD. So I inquired and I was informed that there was an orientation class that was required, but they had just completed that and wouldn't be offering another one for a while. So I just waited it out and continued doing collating documents until another orientation class was offered. And I participated in that and began to volunteer shortly after that. And I've been there ever since. Do you wish you could focus on practicing medicine without all the distractions? Covaris is here to help. As a leader in medical professional liability insurance with more than 45 years experience, Covaris provides insurance protection with data-driven predictive modeling to help you mitigate the risk of claims. By combining insurance protection with risk analytic services, you can reduce distractions and focus on improving clinical, operational, and financial outcomes. Covaris is reinventing what you should expect from your medical professional liability provider. Find out all Covaris can offer you at Covaris.com. That's C-O-V-E-R-Y-S.com. Insurance products issued by Medical Professional Mutual Insurance Company and its insurance subsidiaries, Boston, Massachusetts. interesting to hear that you started doing records, as you pointed out, because so much has moved to electronic records in healthcare setting. And so, Nancy, I know you volunteered at CHKD for about 10 years, and you've given more than 700 hours of your time. Babies in the NICU require a higher level of care, perhaps due to being born prematurely or due to other health complications, which can lead them to have an extended hospital stay, which I imagine can be challenging for the families of those babies. And I can say that just on a personal note, when our son was born, he had a brief stay in the hospital PICU, and that was really stressful for our family, and it wasn't an extended mm-hmm. stay like some of these NICU babies have. And that's why the work that you do is so important for these babies and their families. So for someone who's unfamiliar with the work of a cuddler, and you mentioned going through the orientation process, can you give us a sense of the specific responsibilities of that kind of volunteer work? Sure. On a typical day, when I'm at CHKD in the NICU, I just of course, go to the volunteer office and sign in and then go to the NICU where I scrub in. And then I just circulate through the six pods in the NICU and talk with the nurses, let them know I'm there, let them know how long I'm going to be there. And then I will go around and 
see if there are babies who are in need of help. The nurses will sometimes request that I go to a certain bedside and cuddle a baby, hold the baby, or sometimes I will hear one crying somewhere and go and check and see if they need some assistance, some extra TLC. Sometimes there will be a baby who's just awake and maybe in need of some interaction, and I'll go in and talk to them, play with them, read a book to them. The staff keeps toys and books in every room, and so I go in and hold the babies if that's what is needed. If they're awake and alert, then we'll play with toys or read a book. And being a retired elementary teacher and reading specialist, I'm aware of how important exposure to books and reading is, even as an infant. So I really love that part of it. And as you said, many of the parents are not able to be there all the time, of course, because some of them are from a distance or they are working, have to go back to work because the child has been there for an extended period of time, or they may have other young children at home that need their attention as well. So for me to be able to go in and spend time with the babies and give them that extra human touch and love that they need is good for me as well. Studies have shown that human nurturing and and contact of the type that you provide as a cuddler can have a powerful effect on an infant's physical and mental development, as well as their ability to recover from illness. You also mentioned your history in your professional life as a a teacher and a reading specialist and the importance of stimulating infants' brains by reading to them. Babies that are cuddled often demonstrate greater growth and maintain developmental and, and social milestones and so much more. And when you think about that, and you just alluded to this a little bit, I have to imagine it's rewarding to know you've played a role in helping give these new humans a helping hand in getting started with life. If you would, just tell me your thoughts about that, about the the work you're doing and, and the impact it's having. Well, it certainly has a very beneficial impact for me because, as you said, human touch is good for the babies as well as for me. And I feel gratified knowing that I have time to give to these babies whose parents can't always be there for them. And I can fill in and certainly not take the place of the parents, but certainly give some of that love and care to the babies, knowing that the nurses are busy and have more than one baby to care for. The staff is very dedicated and certainly loving and caring, but their time is limited as well. So for me, it's certainly a benefit. And for the babies, as you said, the human touch is certainly a plus. We should also congratulate you, Nancy, on recently being named People Taking Action Award recipient by a local TV station in Hampton Roads for your work with CHKD as a volunteer. You then turned around and used the monetary prize to buy supplies for the CHKD NICU, which I think speaks really highly to your dedication. You also, as I understand it, do work to train new program volunteers, uh, new cuddlers. When you help train newcomers, what advice do you give them? My advice is just to be aware, listen, and watch, and when you walk by a baby's room, you can tell if they are wanting some attention. If they're crying, certainly they do. If they are awake and alert, they often want some attention or need some attention and need the stimulation. So my advice is just to be very aware of what's going on around you, to love every minute of it, and to know that you're doing a great service for those babies. Well, and a great service, I think, is a great way to describe the work of volunteer cuddlers like yourself. I want to thank you for for sharing your experience. And now that we have covered that important stuff, I do have a few more lighthearted questions to give our listeners a bit of a sense of who you are beyond the volunteer work you do. The first, and this is an entirely imaginary premise, but in the hypothetical (laughs) scenario, Nancy, that you could anticipate your final day on earth, what would your last meal be? Oh, wow. Mm. Well, let's see. There would have to be some sort of seafood included because I love seafood. And, of course, living right here on the Chesapeake Bay and the Atlantic Ocean, that's readily available. So I'd say shrimp, crab, scallop. I'm also a vegetable lover, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, or maybe butter beans. I'm a southern girl, so I love butter beans. And definitely something chocolate because I love chocolate. That sounds like a good final meal, like a low country boil with a side of vegetables and, and, and some chocolate for dessert. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that the COVID-19 pandemic did impact some of the ability of volunteer cuddlers to be in the hospital setting just to limit the spread mm-hmm. of infection and things like that. Uh, we are now, as you know, in the midst of another surge of COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations in Virginia. We hope sooner rather than later at some point to be beyond this pandemic, and we continue to urge people who are unvaccinated to get vaccinated because that really is the strongest line of defense against contracting this virus. And, and we know that the vast majority of cases 
cases in Virginia now, uh, and the vast majority of hospitalizations are among those who are unvaccinated. With all of that long-winded setup, when we do get beyond the COVID-19 pandemic, what's one thing that you're most looking forward to being able to do? You know, there are a lot of things that I would like to do, and I think traveling is probably one of the ones that, you know, traveling at a distance is something that we enjoy doing, and I would love to be able to do some foreign travel. Okay. I think a lot of people have missed out on the ability to travel and or to take a vacation, so I know a number of people are looking forward to that. So that's very understandable and relatable. And then finally, Nancy, to conclude this podcast. The last question for you is this. If you were stranded on a deserted island, what one book, one album, and one movie would you take with you to keep yourself company? We will spot you a copy of the religious text of your choice. So other than that, what are your three entertainment survival kit picks? Okay. Book. I love to read, obviously, and I love to read both fiction and nonfiction, but if I were on a deserted island, I would probably want something that would entertain me. So I would probably choose historical fiction because that's a favorite genre of mine and probably maybe a James Michener like Chesapeake since I live on the Chesapeake Bay Mm -hmm. or something of that nature. One of those nice long books that would keep me well entertained. Mm Mm-hmm. And then one album and one movie. Okay. I'm not I'm not really a huge movie buff, but I've always enjoyed an American president, Michael Douglas and Annette mm-hmm. Benning. Mm-hmm. I don't want a limousine, I don't want an escort, I want a plain, ordinary, non bulletproof automobile. Well somebody around here must have a Chevy I can borrow. Well find one and have it outside the West Wing entrance in five minutes. Excuse me, sir. Where are you going? I'm going over to her house. I'm gonna stand outside her door till she lets me in. I'm not leaving till I get her back. It has a happy ending. I'm all about happy endings. So that would probably be the movie I would choose. And an album. Yes, ma'am. Uh, James Taylor. James Taylor is a North Carolina native, as am I. And we are also of the same generation. So I can certainly relate to his music and enjoy his music. In my mind. Arguably the greatest American troubadour, James Taylor. Can't go wrong. (laughs) Well, with that, that is going to bring us to the close of another episode of the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast. If you like what you heard, please make sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe so that you know when new episodes are available. We want to once again thank our guest, Nancy Morgan, who is a volunteer cuddler at CHKD in the NICU for joining us today. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I thoroughly enjoyed it.